This is one of multiple videos discussing IP version 6 routing. In this example, router 1 and router 2 are connected via a serial interface. These routers have just booted up and have no configuration apart from a default GNS3 configuration. So as an example, if we use the command show IP interface brief, we don't see any IP addresses configured on the routers and all interfaces on the routers are shut down. Show IPv6 route shows no routes in the IPv6 routing table because no IPv6 addresses have been configured on the router and we can see that by using the command show IPv6 interface brief. Output gives us similar information to what we would see using show IP interface brief. All interfaces are shut down. So on router one, I'm gonna enable IP version six unicast routing, and then go onto the serial interface and no shut the interface and configure an IP version six address of 2001 colon one colon colon one slash 64. Now, when we look at the IP version six routing table, we see that a connected network exists as well as a local network. The local network is the IP address configured on that interface. So this is the IP address that's configured on the serial zero interface, which we can see as follows. We're using a slash 64 mask. So the connected network is displayed with a slash 64 mask, but the 128 bit IP address is shown in the output as well. Routers will create IP version six routes based on the unicast IP version six address configured on the interface. So this command results in this network appearing in the routing table. The router also creates the host route or local route using 128 bit prefix for the IP version six address configured on the interface. If we shut that interface down and then look at the routing table again, you can see that the IP address has been removed from the routing table. So in the same way as we have with IP version four, the route only appears in the routing table when the interface comes up. So interface serial two slash zero is now up up. So we have the subnet or connected route and the local route or host route added to the routing table. If the interface goes down, the route is removed from the routing table. I'll create a loopback address on this router with an IP version six address of 2001 face colon one colon colon one slash 64. So show IPv6 route should show us that that route is added. Here it is. There's the connected network and there's the local or router IP address. On router two, we still don't have any IP addresses configured. So show IPv6 route shows us no routes in the IP version six routing table. I'll enable IP version six unicast routing and then go onto the serial interface and no shut it and configure an IP version six address on the interface of 2001 colon one colon colon two slash 64. While I'm here, I'll configure the loopback address. As you can see, the serial interface has now come up on both sides. So loopback interface will be 2001 colon face colon two colon colon one. So show IPv6 route. We can see multiple routes in the routing table. Here's the connected route for the serial, connected route for the loopback, local route or router route for the serial and loopback. Now will router two be able to ping router one on the serial interface? Answer is yes. And that's because they directly connected to one another. 
and they are configured in the same subnet. So router one can also ping router two. We can prove that by doing a debug. Commands are very similar to IPv4. So debug IPv6 ICMP. When we do the ping, we can see the output here in a similar way to IPv4. Notice IPv4 shows no routes in the routing table because we haven't configured any IPv4 addresses on these routers. This network is running a pure IPv6 implementation. Will router two be able to ping the loopback of router one? What do you think? Will router two be able to ping the loopback of router one? Debug IP packet will show us the result. So let's ping the loopback of router one. Echo request is being sent. And I did the wrong debug there. Be careful of that mistake. Let's use debug IPv6 packet rather and see what happens now. So this is better. We can see an echo is being sent. Just stop that ping now. So an echo is being sent. The router has picked this address as the source address. In other words, the serial interface or outgoing interface is used as the source address for ICMP traffic. Something very similar will happen in IP version four. So it's trying to send an echo to that address using this local IP address with a destination set to that. And the important piece is notice route is not found. Again, route is not found. Route is not found. The router cannot send traffic to that destination network because it doesn't appear in the IP version six routing table. So what we need to do here is configure static routes. In this example, because we're using a serial interface, we can configure a route using the local outgoing interface. So very similar to IPv4, we're gonna use the IPv6 route command and specify the destination route, which is 2001 face colon one, colon colon slash 64, and the local outgoing interface is gonna be serial two slash zero. So now, can we ping that network? Yes, we can. We're getting a lot of debug information. So I'll turn off the debug. Scrolling up, you can see that the ping succeeded. And if we do that again, notice we can ping the loopback of router one. Now router one, doesn't know about the loopback of router two, so we need to configure that. So IPv6 route, destination is 2001, colon face, colon two, colon, colon one, slash 64. Outgoing interface is gonna be serial two slash zero. So show IPv6 route. We can see that route added to the routing table and we should be able to ping 2001 face two colon colon one, and that works. So again, just like with IP version four, you need to have a route in the routing table to be able to reach a destination network. In this example, we've added routes using static routes to the IP version six routing table and using the local outgoing interface rather than next hop address. So show run pipe include route shows us that we are using the outgoing local interface to get to the destination network. That works well in a point to point serial connection such as this, but won't work well when using ethernet. When using ethernet, you should use the next hop IP address. Now these routers are using C3725 software, version 12.4 of the iOS. In a subsequent video, I'll configure static routes using next top IP address, but I'll use version 15 software and I'll use viral images to do that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.